a happy Friday. Uh, we have a bit of a switch up of topics for today. Uh, I, I lied to you when I said that we talk about how we get balanced uh, binary search trees today. That's been moved to Monday uh, because today I wanted to talk about uh, uh, get us all set up for the data structure you'll be implementing in the next lab, um, which is a, a particular kind of, of search tree uh, that we'll be, be going over. Um, something else I wanted to say about this upcoming lab is that it represents the peak of this CS201, uh, by which I mean if uh, if I were to kind of draw the trajectory of the lab assignments over the course, uh, start with lab zero, and we have lab one, which is pretty tough, a lot of Java. Maybe lab two is a little easier, and then lab three and lab four. And as many of you have found, lab five, big jump, more open ended, bigger. Lab six, that's our peak. Can you go down? And lab seven, Yes. We'll, we'll come back down. So, <laughs> lab, lab six is our is our, our uh, apex apex data structures. So, I wanted to make sure that over the weekend, over the weekend, you can read the write up for lab six thoroughly, so that you can come on Monday with as many questions as possible about the lab. Like, that is the goal. Read the write-up thoroughly, come up with every question you have about how this is going to work, how to think about this data structure, uh, and we'll go from there. So lab six, you have slightly more time to do this than any of the other labs uh, because it's, it's, uh, it's the, the, the big kibosh. All right. Uh, so that's that's what we're doing today. Uh, questions on uh, the the lab that's due tonight, uh, or anything else we've been working on recently? All right. Quick review of some some of our search tree terminology before we dive into new stuff. Uh, the tree pictured here, we talked about uh, needing to consider the, the successor. This came up when we were removing a node from a binary tree and we wanted to replace it with some other node. And so if we have 65, what would its successor be? Movement towards 72. That's excellent. Uh, why is why is seventy two uh, uh, the successor of sixty five? Sure. For for something to be a, su a successor, it has to be the leftmost right descendant. So in this case, it'd be seventy two. Exactly. That if we want to find the successor, we say okay, go right once and then left as far as you can. The smallest node that is greater than the node we're considering. And you can also think successor, it's like the next one in the kind of sorted order. And how you find that is go right once, then left as far as you can. Uh, questions on that? Taking the other side, what is the predecessor of 41? Ben? That's the right most left descendant. Exactly. We just kind of flipped our definition. Predecessor, one that comes right before the node, and we find it by looking to the rightmost left descendant, largest thing that is smaller uh, than our node. Does that make sense? All right. So when we have talked about uh, kind of doing things with, with maps, uh, the map data structure so far. Uh, we have, like, we, we can put a key 
into the into the map, uh, and then what can we what can we do with it? Yeah, we can kind of get the value that's associated with the key. Anything else we can do? Remove the key. We can certainly remove the key. Anything else? Put in a key, no problem. Yeah, we can we can put in a key to a value, but assuming that we have a key there, uh, there's one other thing that we might care about doing with our or or using our map to check. If the key contains itself. Yeah, we might also care about you know checking if some key is in our map or not. So today I want to start out by saying, well, what if there are some fancier operations that we would want to do? Uh, and to think about how could we actually implement these efficiently. So another we might consider is find range, which we might give some key that we start at and some key that we end at. And we get and we might get back a list of all the values in our map that go with the key that's between these two. So now instead of getting just the value that goes along with one key, we might say, let's get a whole range of values. For example, we might have a, uh, a map where, uh, or, or in particular, let's think of a binary search tree uh, where our keys are uh, GPAs. And we want to say, like, and the values of those keys are our are, are students. And we want to say, find all, uh, like, starting with GPA 3.5 to 3.8, give me all the values that correspond with that range. So as being able to, to extract some range of values, that's, that's an operation that could be useful. And we might also want some kind of nearest operation. Uh, and you can think of this as uh, maybe we have some kind of map uh, application. And we want to find, like, give me the nearest intersection to this point that someone clicked on in the map. So this would be like a physical, uh, a, a physical map um, or a you know, like a, a, a map you'd pull up on Google Maps, but all sorts of situations where you might want to find the nearest, the thing that's closest to some, to some key. So if we, for example, have going to make a bit of room. So we have something like this. We have some binary search tree like this. And we want to say Which is uh, the node that is nearest to 5.4, where its key is the, the closest to 5.4. And 
as usual, well, all we have to start with is the root of the tree. And so we're going to keep track of a best so far that we found. And so when we start uh, and the kind of distance from what we're looking for to the best so far. So if we start at our root here, it would be the best thing that we found so far. We start off saying 11 is the closest, the nearest thing that we found, uh, and it's 5.6 away uh, from what we're looking for, 5.4. From here, what, where should I go next in, our, in, in this tree? Ma'am? Left. Why left? Um, well, the nearest value is smaller than the root value, so it'd be more likely to be on the left. Yeah, if, because this, exactly, we know this is a binary search tree, so everything to the left is smaller than 11, everything to the right is bigger. Could we possibly, could our nearest node possibly be to the right? No, because everything to the right is bigger than 11, and that must be farther away from 5.4. So we can actually kind of completely ignore that direction, because we know the only places that a closer node could be would be to the left. Does that make sense? So we can proceed to 6. 6 is a lot closer than 11. It's only 0 0.6 away from what we're looking for. And so now 6 becomes our best so far. And again, we're faced with the decision, do we go left or right? Wrong. Uh, left because the better report is less than six. Exactly. Again, we can say we can't possibly find something closer to the right because something closer would have to be less than six. Uh, we end up at four. Is four closer than six? No. So our best so far is stays six. In which direction do we go from four? Yeah, I see people motioning to the to the right because what we're looking for is greater than four. And in fact, we found five. That's even closer than six. And so that's our, our nearest node. And importantly, we only had to visit kind of four nodes out of this tree. We didn't have to check each one because at each point we could tell which direction we might find something closer. And there was a direction where we definitely wouldn't. Does that make sense? Questions on this? Jeffrey. In that case, if uh, it was nearest parameter of 5.9, um, would you visit 4 and 5 and go back to 6? And 6 is still closer to Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If we're looking for 5.9, we have no way of knowing, well, 5.95 could be down here somewhere. So we have to go all the way to a leaf before we know that whatever we have, the best that we have seen so far is, in fact, the, the nearest. Other questions? Everything? What up? And so, like, on the OS being 5.4, it was, like, 5.5. And so, like, the 6 and 5 both have a distance of, like, the same. Yes, that's, that's a good question. I mean, in that case, either 6 or 5 would be a correct answer. Uh, if you coded this up, you'd probably be looking for things that were closer than the best so far. And so 5.5 would not be closer to 5.5 than 6, so you might stick with 6. Or you could have some rule that you always, if there are ones that are tied, you always take the smaller, always take the bigger. Um, but... Kind of, in that case, 
if we have something that is exactly between two, then they're both the nearest one. And maybe in some cases you want to return both of them rather than just one. Other questions? All right, so these are kind of the, these kind of operations are kind of our motivation for uh, one part of our motivation anyway. We want uh, a data structure that is going to do these operations efficiently. So the other part of our motivation is <clears throat> not all data can be compared along one dimension. Here's what I mean. Let's say I have an astronomical image, like a telescope took a picture of the night sky, and I have stars and various points, And uh, I also spotted <laughs> a space cat. Uh, some stars and a space cat captured by my telescope. And I might want to ask questions like uh, those operations I was posing, like a range might be Tell me all the stars that are inside this box. But now I don't have just like a start value and an end value. I have kind of a two-dimensional range that I'm looking for. So you can imagine this is like between a pair of x coordinates and between a pair of y coordinates would be the objects inside this box. I might also ask which star is the closest to the space cat. And again, if I'm talking about distance, to figure out how close something is, that's again a two-dimensional, that requires two dimensions of input, the distance in x and the distance in y. There's a formula, I can turn that into a measure of how far away these are. But this is an example of data where I might ask these kind of questions, like what is the nearest range, but now my data is two dimensions. And uh, one, like one approach uh, without any sort of fancy data structure, what's something I could do to kind of answer the questions of what's inside this box or what's the closest star? Maybe someone I haven't heard from yet today. Aiden? Like, for what's inside the box? Could you, like, if, uh, like, um, you can check all the pixels between, like, this set of X values and all the Y values, and then, like, move over, like, every single pixel and see if it, like, uh, yeah, so let, let's say I just like, I have, a, uh, I have a bunch of objects, each of which are stars or a space cat, and I'm asking like, and each of them has some position, and I'm asking which of those are inside the box. I think you're on the on track. We could check each one. We just like check all the things in the image uh, and see if any of them are in the box. Check all the things in the image, see how far each of them is away from the space cat, and get the closest one. Uh, but I'm sure it will come as no surprise to you that the strategy of, well, just check all the things, not what we're usually going for here in 201. We want to somehow be more efficient than, well, just check everything. Um, so we might say, well, we have our binary search tree. It keeps things in order. Maybe we can use it to kind of structure this uh, 2D data so that we can answer these questions efficiently. So to pick a smaller example, let's say we have Mars, 
located at 1.0, 2.8, and Earth located at 1.5, 1.6. And so if I want to put these two kind of uh, uh, data points into a binary search tree, I need to have some way of saying which one is less than or greater than the other. <coughs> so does anyone have a suggestion for just like something that I might, some way that I might put these two things in order? Paul? Can you use their distance, like with the Pythagorean theorem? Uh, so perhaps I could kind of pick some point and get each of their distance from that. Uh, what about something even simpler that I kind of wouldn't have to do any math? Jake? Uh, you could just sort them by either the x or the y values. Exactly. I might just say, OK, I'm going to put them in order by the x coordinate or the y coordinate. And that gives me two possible trees, the like x-based, where I'm going to say I'm, I'm inserting Earth first. Go Earth. And so I have 1.5, 1.6 at the root. Uh, and would Mars be to the left or right of Earth? Yeah. Yeah, we'd, it has a smaller x coordinate, and we're sorting by x, so it'd be to the left. And if we did y based, we'd see it go in the other direction because Mars' y coordinate is, is higher than Earth's y coordinate. Does this make sense? All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's do a slightly bigger example. Where we're going to have the following data. A at negative 1, negative 1. B at 2, 2. C at 0, 1. D at 1, 0, E at negative 2, negative 2, and F, negative 3, 2.5. So what I'd like to do uh, is for you to uh, work with your neighbors and to, if these nodes are inserted in this order from A to F, uh, and we're arranging them by, let's, let's do the x-coordinate version kind of what would our binary search tree look like. We insert these, these six nodes. Uh, yeah, take about five minutes, work with your neighbors to come up with what that tree would look like. If you finish with that, also work out what the y-based tree would look like. All right, let's get our tree up here. I'll erase this copy. I've drawn out our values actually kind of on a 2D plane in sort of roughly relative position. Let's look at what they look like in our tree. Uh, what's at the root? Yeah, at the root we have A, at negative 1, negative 1. Uh, next, we insert B. Where does that go? Right. Yep, we have a larger x coordinate. We use it 2, 2. Where does C go? Yep, x coordinate is greater, but less than 2. How about D? Yeah, we, again, find a, an x-coordinate that's less than 2 but greater than 0. Oh, that's a key. You put that there. Uh, how about E? Yeah, 
Uh, oh, E is negative 2, negative 2, I was thinking, yeah. And then finally, F. Yeah, we end up F down here. All right, so we end up with this is our X-based version of, of the tree. Uh, and so let's look at how we might go about doing our kind of rain, find range, where maybe I say, uh, let's say this is X equals negative 1.5. And I just want kind of everything with X coordinate less than negative 1.5. By kind of expressing a kind of 2D box here uh, in my on my points, and I want to know which which uh, uh, which nodes end up uh, to uh, with x coordinate less than negative 1.5. Uh, so when I'm at the root, uh, do I know kind of where to look for x coordinates less than 1.5? Yeah, I would say, look, negative 1.5 is less than negative 1. So I can go left, and I can what's called prune my search by ignoring everything to the right prune because we're dealing with a tree and when you like chop off uh, part of a tree it's called pruning and so computer scientists when you chop off part of a tree and ignore it when you're searching for stuff that's also called pruning so you can prune off this whole right side of the tree because we know we only need to look to the left so our, our binary search tree is still is still helping us out here but what if I said through this green box saying that I want everything with, uh, uh, so I guess this uh, up here was actually talking about x less than 1.5. Uh, and this is uh, y less than negative 0.5. So I have this other search in green here another range uh, range query uh, starting at the root do I know like uh, uh, the root is a is one of the the nodes with y less than than negative 0.5 uh, but do I know which direction I should go why not Elena? Exactly. That this everything is organized by X. So if I want to do some search by Y, I really I have to just check everything. I have no way of pruning any part of this tree, so I simply have to check both children every time as long as they exist. So what we can take away from this is that our binary search tree, when we're dealing with two or even more dimensions, it is only organizing data along one of those dimensions, which means, sure, it's great if you only ask about that dimension, but as soon as you have some other criteria, like a y-coordinate in our x-base tree, we're back to just having to check every single thing. So it's kind of motivating our quest for a new data structure that can actually organize data along multiple dimensions. So I've been using two-dimensional points here. Uh, can anyone think of other examples of multi-dimensional data that computers might need to deal with? Uh, 3D objects, I might do something. 
Exactly. Any kind of computer graphics that are in 3D or kind of modeling software, anything like that, we now have three-dimensional points that we might need to, to find the nearest one or find everything inside some sort of range. Uh, other examples? Our multi-dimensional data doesn't actually need to be just numbers. You might think something like, uh, I would like to find a song that is at least 120 beats per minute, that is between two and three minutes long, uh, that has at least a million listens on Spotify, uh, and that was recorded since the year 2000. This is like multi-dimensional. There are kind of all these different dimensions of information about a song, and I'm doing a search through some catalog of music across many of these dimensions. So a tree that could organize multidimensional data is not limited to kind of our geometric 2D or 3D points. There's all sorts of like any sort of thing that we have multiple pieces of information about that could be multidimensional data. Does that make sense? All right, so now we come to what is our actual solution to our multidimensional data structure? And we're going to use something called a K-D tree or KD tree. where k is going to be the number of dimensions that we're organizing the data along. Um, this is uh, a common solution to this sort of problem. Um, and the other thing that's interesting about a KD tree from our perspective is this is the first instance where we will be implementing a data structure which simply does not exist in Java. By which I mean the Java library does not provide a KD tree implementation. I'm not aware of any programming language standard library that does. And so this is an example of like a real world useful data structure that if you actually needed it, you would need to implement it or find someone else who had implemented it from scratch. And you will implement a KD tree in lab six. And specifically, we'll focus on organizing two-dimensional points. So we'll have a 2D tree, because we'll have an X and a Y dimension. All right, before getting into further detail on our KD tree, I want to get into some detail about Theodore Roosevelt. They may remember. Uh, Teddy, as he was often called, was, uh, became president when uh, William McKinley was assassinated. Uh, and he is uh, one, of, uh, one of the more interesting figures uh, in American history. Uh, he was a voracious reader, would kind of read a, a, a book a day in, in some cases. He wrote books of history. Uh, uh, but uh, he was also, among other things, very pro-war. He was so pro-war that when the Spanish-American War broke out and he was, I think, undersecretary or assistant secretary of the Navy, he resigned his post. He recruited a group of volunteers. They called themselves the Rough Riders, and they headed off to Cuba to join the war. Um, and uh, journalists in Cuba wrote all about uh, the Rough Riders and sort of kind of part, uh, uh, raised Theodore Roosevelt's national profile. Um, in addition to being pro-war, he was uh, pro kind of American expansion and imperialism. Uh, the most notable example is the Panama Canal. Uh, there was no country of Panama. That territory is part of uh, uh, Colombia. And as this political cartoon indicates, the US sort of intrigued to get Panama to break away from Colombia so that then the US could go to Panama and say, 
we we would like to build this canal. And now you are our friends because we paid you to leave Colombia. Um, and you can see he's he's in his uh, uh, kind of rough rider outfit here. Um, this was uh, a continuing time of kind of political uh, um, uh, kind of re uh, sectionalism uh, in the U.S. This is when Roosevelt ran for election to his own term after he finished out McKinley's. Uh, he won handily, but as you can see, not with any support from uh, the Southeast. Uh, he made a pledge to not run for a third slash his second own term. Uh, this was not a, a, a law at this point. It was sort of a norm. And he basically immediately regretted this. He was very popular. Uh, and he, um, you know, he liked being president. Uh, and it brings one of the most remarkable stories is he actually tried to run for president again in 1912. At a campaign event, he was shot. And he then proceeded to give a speech, which began like, I have a bullet inside me, so I'll be brief. He then spoke for an hour. And only then did he seek medical attention. This is the kind of crazy uh, that Theodore Roosevelt was. All right, so back to our KD tree. Uh, I'll show a visual example of this in a moment. But the key idea here is that we're going to that for our 2D tree, we're going to alternate splitting by x or splitting by y. So I want to give you a bit of kind of intuition by by uh, splitting here. The splitting means like what goes to the left and right child. Uh, but we can also think of splitting as a having a geometrical implication where A as the root of this x-based tree kind of split the world of nodes into those with um, rather other way into those nodes with x less than negative 1 and those nodes with x greater than negative 1. And then b here kind of splits the world into those nodes with kind of, uh, x coordinate less than 2 and, and greater than 2. And so in this x space tree, all these nodes sort of were splitting our, our two-dimensional space along the x. And what's going to be different in our KD tree is we're going to alternate kind of which direction we're dividing our, our keys in. So let me show you what this looks like. So we have here uh, an empty tree. And first, we insert uh, uh, the point 2, comma 3. And so uh, and that has the value a. And so we have our root node, which will start splitting by x. So I'm going to have root split by x, and then depth 1 split by y, depth 2, split, split by x again, and just keep alternating back and forth. And you can see this drawn here by nodes to the left of a will have will be somewhere over here, x coordinate less than 2. Nodes to the right of a will have x coordinate somewhere over here, greater than 2. So if I insert z, which is at position 4, 2. Is this going to the left or to the right of A? Yeah, it will end up to the, to the right of A. And so it's down here. 
But the children of Z, because it is kind of depth one, it is below an X-splitting node, is now going to split according to its Y-coordinate. And that's where this D and U come from, down and up. So nodes to the left of Z will be a Y-coordinate less than two. Those to the right of Z will have a Y-coordinate above two. What if I insert B also has a uh, key for two? Uh, if we're implementing this as a map, where we have kind of the same key and value behavior as, as a map, uh, what should happen if we insert uh, something with, with a, a key for two that happens to already be uh, in our tree? Yeah. We replace it. Yeah, we replace the value associated with that key. So we would compare our x coordinate four to a that tells us to go right. Now we find a node with exactly the same key, so we replace it with our new value of b. Does that make sense? All right. How about inserting c uh, at position four five? So. Uh, take uh, take a moment and kind of think of or write down your guess of where C is going to go in this tree. All right, to walk through this, uh, we're at A, we start at A. A is an X-based node, so we compare the X-coordinate, it's greater than, we go to the right. B is a Y-based node, and so we compare its Y-coordinate to B's Y-coordinate, it's greater than, so we go right again. And we insert C here. And because we're alternating with each level, C is back to being an X-based node. Kind of every child of an X-based node is a Y-based node, and every child of a Y-based node is an X-based node. And you can see in this picture on the right, we're kind of building up these nodes that are kind of dividing our 2D space into smaller and smaller portions according to like where C's children will go, they'll be to the, they all have to be to the right of A, and then they'll either be in this left section if they have a smaller X coordinate, or this right section if they have a greater one. All right, again, think of where this node D will go uh, if we insert it with the uh, key 3, 3. Who who can share a prediction with us? Shoka? Uh, it's probably going to go to the left of C. Uh, B is greater than 2 at A. Mm -hmm. And then U is greater than 2 at B. And then U is less than 4 at C. I would agree uh, that we insert D here. Uh, again, we can picture it as it is dividing the space to the left of C into uh, points that are above its Y coordinate three or below. This making sense so far? Any questions on this? Looking at a couple more examples, uh, if we insert E uh, with one and five, uh, any predictions of where that one will go? Ron? Uh, above C, or like up compared to B. Uh, down here? Yes. So how do we get there from A? Uh, I'll 
think it's comparing the x coordinate. Oh, okay. So it'd be to the left of a. Yeah, because we're we're always going to start at the root, and our root's comparing on the x coordinate, so e would end up less than the the x coordinate of two. Um, all right, so uh, quick. Um, so the other thing that I would like to uh, uh, walk through about our KD tree is not that one. Is let's suppose that we uh, have the following KD tree and we want to find the nearest point to 0, 07 marked over here with this pin. Now, this is something that's like quite easy for humans to just see visually. Like we can look at this picture and say, oh, well, clearly E is the closest one. Uh, but when we have a computer do it, it will need to, for example, traverse our KD tree uh, in order to find which one is nearest. And as we go through this, we're going to see, uh, like we did with our X-based binary search tree, can we prune parts of this tree that we don't actually need to check? So we start off at A. We currently haven't found a best. Uh, and our uh, point 0 0.07 is about 4.5 away from the point 0.23, so A is going to be the best that we found so far. Uh, and we're using the, the Pythagorean theorem to, to or the, um, uh, the distance formula to compute our, our distance. And uh, for 0 0.7, we might ask, uh, we need to consider, is there a closer one in the children? Uh, and we can also ask, which one should we look at first? Like, which one is likeliest to, uh, which one could have uh, something closer? So if we think about which direction from A should we look to hopefully find uh, the nearest thing to 0, 0.7. In this case, we will uh, consider uh, the left uh, the left descendants of a first because uh, uh, that is the kind of region in which our the point we're looking for is located. It could be the case that a wouldn't have any left children, in which case the closest point could be something like right here, somewhere on the right side of a, but where if there are left children, that's a good place to look first because that's kind of where our, our point's located. So we look at E. Uh, it's 2.2. That's our new best. And again, we consider which should we consider the, the uh, down left? Uh, should we consider the, the, the down children of E or the up children of E first in our search? Yeah, that's again where our, where our point is located. Uh, so we consider that one. Uh, there are no points. There, there is no node there. So uh, nothing, nothing to get the distance from. Uh, we come back uh, and kind of the less likely side, uh, we now kind of need to check there um, in case there could be something closer. Uh, is it possible for there to be something closer in this blue region than E? Yeah, there could be like uh, 0, 5 would be closer than 1, 5. So could actually, could actually, uh, I mean, I guess 0, 5.00001, something uh, um, down, or 4.999. So kind of the best possible distance to something in this region is better than 2.2, so we will check there. Um, and we've kind of explored this whole side of the tree, so then we could take a look at this side. Um, 
And so this kind of nearest neighbor search uh, is uh, one of the operations that you will implement on a KD tree. Uh, so that will be all the time that we have for today. Uh, so as I said, please take a careful look at the Lab 6 write-up over the weekend or before class on Monday and come with all possible questions, and we'll talk more about trees then. Uh, have a good weekend, and see you Monday.